the last stage when you had to accept your offer of admission. So the admissions office have already sent out the email. So look your, in your email and in your spam filter or in your promotional folder just to make sure that you have received it. And if you know that you can't come to Karolinska Institute, that you should also decline your offer. But since you're here at this pre-departure webinar, we're just guessing that you will accept this offer and make sure to do so on time. And first installment is due by 20th of May if you have to pay the uh, tuition fee. And Maria will let you know more about that later on. And same for those of you who need to apply for a residency permit, you have to do that as soon as possible. And the same goes for accommodation, but we will talk more about that in this presentation. On the 27th of August, there will be an introduction ceremony online. It will be online this year because we still consider all meeting all programs on location on campus is a little bit too risky during these times of COVID-19. So it will be an introduction ceremony online, but still you have to come here and be on campus on the 30th of August when the program starts. Just quickly about COVID-19 because it's of course difficult to know exactly what it's gonna be like uh, this fall semester, but all programs are planning for teaching on campus. And if you want to find out more about how we're dealing with the coronavirus uh, here on campus, you can check our student information pages uh, about education regarding Corona on our website. And um, we also have the coronavirus FAQ for newly admitted degree students uh, that you can check out. We have links to all of these uh, through our newsletter for admitted students. Accommodation, and I am starting with accommodation for uh, students uh, outside the European Union. Uh, you are guaranteed housing for the first year, but this still means that you actively have to register at KI Housing's website. So go online and do that as soon as possible. And you need to have a point of contact here at KI in order to do that. And you can use uh, our study guidance, who is Eva Ferron, and you can find her details below here. So write that down or go look on her uh, on our website, on our accommodation website and uh, use these contact details when you apply for housing. Also note that you have to upload your notification results as a letter of invitation. And remember that you have to sign up for housing for the second year since you're only guaranteed housing for the first year. Uh, so sign up at SSSB as soon as possible and uh, double check that you have done that to get your cue points. And I'm sure that Hulie will also give his perspective on finding student accommodation in his presentation as well. Accommodation for students who come from Europe. You are not guaranteed housing, uh, but if you sign up now, you will get as many cue points as possible. So one day equals one cue point. Uh, so sign up for kihousing.se and sssb.se as soon as possible. Uh, it's a shortage of rooms here in Stockholm, but I spoke to KI Housing the other day and they said that during the pandemic, it's of course less students who come here. So it's actually a little bit easier to find housing now, but still the notification results for the Swedish students go out in June. So you should try to find something before the national students. Uh, receive their notification results. It's still difficult to find housing in Stockholm. So if you don't want to stay in a student housing, uh, you can see our website for more tips and tricks and other places where you can stay. And you can read our student blogs because they have plenty of uh, blog posts about this topic. And don't miss our Instagram live that our digital ambassadors will be holding this coming Monday on 19th of April at three o'clock because they will have a housing special uh, during their uh, Instagram live. So they will show you around different places where they can, where you can stay. And I think that will be a lot of fun to watch. And now leaving over to Maria. Yes, uh, resident permit. All international students outside of the European Union slash EES area you need to apply for a resident permit in order to, uh, to enter Sweden. 
And in order to do the application, you need to uh, have a uh, admissions uh, offer. You need to prove that you have paid your tuition fee. And uh, you, as soon as you pay the fee, you will uh, receive a confirmation of payment from Karolinska Institute, which you need to attach. And also you need to prove that you are able to support yourself. And this able to support yourself means that you need to upload bank statements, which shows that you have at least 8,568 Swedish crowns per month for the period you are applying for. And it's really important to show that these uh, funds are your own. If you submit a bank statement from your parents or from uh, other family members, it won't count. That will mean a rejection. So please make sure you have all the documents you need in order to, uh, to apply for the permit. Last day to apply is June 15th. Uh, so make sure you do it before that. And uh, one piece of advice is of course to do it as soon as you've paid your tuition fee and received this confirmation of the payment letter. If you are admitted to one of the one year uh, master programs, uh, you will not be registered with a uh, so-called personal number here in Sweden, just so you know. But you will have all the other, you will all have all the rights, of course. But it's going to be a little bit more trickier, just so you know. Maybe Julia will talk more about this. Uh, also, if you're a fee-paying student, you are covered by an insurance that uh, KI will support you with. And this is, of course, also... Uh, uh, you need to upload this as well, as it's stated here in the uh, slide. Yeah, that's it, Jenny. Um, we have uh, to... mentioned... Okay, I'll keep on talking, Jenny. <laughs> we have notified the uh, Swedish Migration Office that all... Uh, programs are planning on on-campus education. That means that you need a resident permit in order to uh, enter Sweden. If uh, the program would have uh, distance learning, you would not be uh, eligible for a uh, resident permit, just so you know. So online uh, on-campus studies is what we mentioned to, uh, to the agency and they should be able to grant you a resident permit based on this information. Okay, finances. Sweden is uh, kind of expensive if you compare to other uh, countries around the world. Uh, so the uh, estimated cost of living is about 8,500 a month. And that's also what you need to show that you can, that you have as own funds. Uh, many students are uh, really interested in finding a, a part-time position. Uh, I think we should be quite frank uh, here and let you know that finding positions on campus is quite hard. Uh, you can do the uh, work that Julio does, uh, but besides that, it's really hard to find positions. So don't count on financing your studies by working as research uh, officers or assistants or teaching assistants. It won't work, I'm sorry. But if you find other kind of uh, work, you are allowed to work on your study visa. But please remember, you are admitted to a uh, highly ranked institution and it will uh, take quite a lot of your time. And as said before, insurance, uh, all fee paying students, you are covered by a insurance from Karolinska Institute. Uh, but you should check your home and liability insurance before you leave your home country. European uh, students, you are covered by the European health insurance uh, uh, kind of agreement we have within Europe. Please make sure you have your card updated and with you. And also, it doesn't matter if you're a non-EU or EU students, we are covering all of you on campus as well. And uh, related to finances, scholarships, uh, Karolinska Institute has two different scholarships that we own. It's the Karolinska Institute Global Master Scholarship and it's the KIDIS Fellowship. These will be announced by the 28th of April. 
as well will the uh, Swedish Institute scholarship be. All students who have applied for the scholarships, uh, you can wait and accept your study place until you know if you will receive this uh, scholarship or not. And we, as an institution, we don't need to know if you've applied for the scholarships from the Swedish Institute either. They will notify us. So we have a close uh, collaboration and close contact with the Swedish Institute. And we are fully aware who will be the uh, scholarships holders when they announce the, uh, this year's round. For the KI scholarships, you will uh, receive a phone call uh, letting you know if you're one of the lucky awardees. And if you were not lucky this year, you will receive an email saying that uh, the application is finished and over. And for the tuition fees, uh, a, uh, an invoice will be sent to the same email you have used at the university admissions, uh, in your university admissions account. It will be sent the 4th of May and then you have 16 days in order to pay. You can pay with either an ordinary bank transfer or we can uh, support you with a personalized secure link and you can pay online with your credit card. If you would like to pay online with your credit card, notify me when you have got the uh, invoice and uh, I'll send you this link. It's really, really important that you state your name and your application number in the transfer details if you pay by ordinary bank transfers. We have uh, got quite a lot of money who we can't trace and that's too bad. Um, we know that you're paying because you want to join us. Uh, so please make sure of this. If uh, you're waiting for scholarships with deadlines uh, by end of May or beginning of June, let me know, send an email to me and notify me. And uh, we try to figure out the best way for you to handle this little gap between the due date and your scholarship date. All right, Julio, your turn. Thank you. So reflecting on where I was two years ago on your position, um, all the questions that I had and also all the information that is available, I wanted to keep it very practical and talk to you about what is next. And as Jenny mentioned before, I think that the first step is accommodation because the accommodation in Stockholm is or has been quite difficult in the past years. Obviously now with uh, COVID, uh, things are a bit different, but still uh, the recommendation is the same and is to uh, sign up for care housing. This is my perception as student. I haven't heard of anyone in my class or in my fellow classmates from other programs who did apply to care housing and did not get it at any point uh, before starting the, the program. Some of us got the, the, the offer quite early. Um, some other of us uh, had to wait until probably August because it, it's on a rolling basis but it's a very high chance that you might get it. So my recommendation is apply for it. There are many um, locations. They're opening a new one this year, closer to campus. So you really literally don't lose anything by signing up. So please sign up to KA Housing and consider the, the different um, criteria they have, uh, depending on your status. If you're an international student, if you're from uh, the European Union or a Nordic country, there are different options for you. So take that into consideration. If not, um, the two other most popular ways of getting housing here in Stockholm, like the official ones, would be using these two pages, Block It and Bosta Direct. Um, you will find a lot of information about this in our student blog, which I will refer to a lot during this uh, two minutes that we present in. And um, it's, um, it, those are like web pages and portals uh, for people individually to post their accommodation offers and, and for you to sublet in them. So it's quite straightforward, it's simple. Um, it's not as cheap as care housing, of course, because um, that's one of the big advantages of care housing. Uh, but there's a lot of people that found uh, their accommodations through uh, that mechanism and, and also during second year. And uh, I would say that there's a fourth element there that I haven't um, mentioned and is social media. I found my accommodation for my second year on Facebook. Uh, so yeah, 
do your research, go there. There are a lot of groups uh, about CAS students and accommodations in Stockholm, student accommodations in Stockholm. There are many groups in Facebook that have people offering uh, accommodation possibilities. So that's very good tip for you. And uh, I will highlight this again because Jenny already mentioned it and it is to sign up for SSB as soon as possible because you can queue up to 90 days and then the queue, like the, the 90 days, which are 90 points, and then you can retain those points until you sign up for uh, um, the student association when you come to Sweden. So um, that's something that you should definitely do. Even if you don't use it, for example, in my case, I didn't use SSB because I was lucky enough to find um, a non-student accommodation through uh, Facebook, but if not, I don't know what I would have done. So that's a, a no-brainer there. And uh, I would say that the other thing that you should do besides finding accommodations is start connecting with your class. Um, KI staff has already opened Facebook groups and sometimes some classes have uh, students that are eager enough to open new groups uh, and different social media. So say yes, try to connect with a class get to know them um, in case you need a roommate. That, that's plenty of people that found roommates before even moving to Sweden through uh, social media. And I'm sure it's, it's easier to make friends that way when you come back to Sweden because you already know some people. So definitely that would be one of my um, advices here. I don't know if I can skip. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're doing it, thank you. Okay. Now, before moving to Stockholm, I would say that the most important thing that I did uh, is, is research about the city, like do your own research because you're moving to a different city. I suppose that you already did part of this research and that's why you chose to come in here. Uh, I would assume that, but even if not, I would recommend you to go to the student blog. Um, that's why you're, we digital ambassadors uh, write uh, blog posts about our lives here. Uh, but then there you will find information to how to move around from Stockholm. There's a very a good blog about uh, how to get to different locations from the airports here in Stockholm, how to move around with a public transportation system, those little details, those technicalities about the new city, especially with a, with a very different language from most of you. Um, I think that's a very uh, good starting point as well. You can learn about neighborhoods. A lot of DAs are um, uploading blog posts about different neighborhoods in Stockholm in case you wanna uh, get to know a bit more about that living costs and everything that you might ask yourself at some point, I mean, I am sure that there's something in the blog. And if not, you can contact us, digital ambassadors. Don't be um, scared to contact us or don't, don't you think that you're a burden? That's our job. We're here for you to answer your questions. That's our reason of existence. So uh, if you have any questions that you don't find any answers to in the blog, please come back to us and we will be happy to not only provide you with an answer, but Probably if that's missing in the blog, we can write something about that too and help other people that might have the same question. And uh, I would say that also you should prepare uh, for the quest of getting a, a person number. Uh, again, you go to the blog in case this is new for you, go to the blog and read about this. But in order to get an ID number here in Sweden, which is very important, there's uh, some paperwork that you need to prepare for. And it depends on your status, whether you're an international student, you come from the EU or from another country. So please take that into consideration before uh, even taking the plane to Stockholm. And finally, uh, Jenny, if you move to the next slide, when you arrive to Stockholm, I would say that uh, I really regret no use in KI pickup service. Uh, it's a free service that KI offers to students. I don't know if it's still going to be available during uh, next summer. It will, it will, it will be. Great, thanks. Um, so you can sign up for having a student like me or like any other uh, second year student to come and pick you up at the, at the airport or at uh, Tizen Traven, which is a central station here in Stockholm, and take you to your new home, um, which is, I, I think it's very nice. I, I really regret not doing it at the, at the beginning. But that, that would be a recommendation as well. Um, as uh, the initiation course uh, or the introduction week that we have, um, sadly this year will be uh, online, but still you're required to be here on campus. So um, go attend that event, uh, whatever the dynamic is. Um, I understand that they're also gonna offer Swedish lessons at some point, maybe different from what I had, but still, that's a very good way of meeting new people, making new friends. I know a lot of people that 
uh, our friends since the Swedish lessons, and which is crazy because uh, that's honestly the first thing we did as students here in Stockholm. Um, so yeah, that would be, and also I, I think I learned some stuff there that really helped me settle in the first month, like basic stuff for, because when you go to the supermarket here in Sweden, I would say everyone speaks English, everyone. I really don't need Swedish to live here. But when you go to the supermarket, that's a bit more tricky because uh, they don't have a double, uh, uh, like the little things that say the names and stuff. So you really uh, would appreciate doing those Swedish lessons. And also in case you want to know more about a campus, how does it look like to get oriented? Where should I go, et cetera? Uh, of course you will get some indications, but we also have in, in Facebook and the webpage of Karolinska Institute of Students, we have many campus tours made by uh, digital ambassadors showing not only Solna, but also Fleming's Betty campus. So go there and, and I think that there's a lot of content there that you might not know that there is there. So just go there and in case you have any questions, just go back to us. Uh, but well, as my two final recommendations, once you arrive to Stockholm, I would say go as, as many events as possible. Um, obviously considering uh, COVID or, I mean, my experience on the first year when um, COVID was not still among us uh, was very different for what people live this year but I as I understand you might go back to normal or closer to normal uh, by the autumn semester so go as many as events as possible because that's a great way of meeting new people uh, starting your networking and also it's very very fun I would say it's very very fun and also those are the last days of the Swedish summer and I guarantee you're gonna really remind and remember me when I tell you this uh, you're gonna miss those days as well because it's gonna be a long winter. So try to get to know the city on those first days. This is a fact, most of master programs here at KI start very, very chill, let's say the first month because we have an introductor, uh, like introduction course, uh, which is mostly for welcoming and uh, just like level us up. So it's, it's, very, it's very relaxed for the first month only. Don't quote me on this, but just for the first month, as much as I know. So there's a very good time for just go on a walk and like get to know your neighborhood, get to know the city, how the transportation system works and kind of settle in uh, before uni starts to get uh, difficult. And that would be it for the moment. I think we spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. And thank you all for listening. But before we start the Q&A, I would like to give you some final advice, and that is to read the pre-arrival guide. There's a lot of information there, and read our monthly newsletters. They will be up to date with information that you need uh, until you arrive here in Stockholm and start your program. And don't miss anything that our digital ambassadors do. We are talking a lot about them, but that's because they're doing a really good job uh, with content-wise. They are doing a lot of information giving you a lot of information that is so good for you. And uh, we are having live streams on Instagram and Facebook. So check that out. You can find on our website, we have listed the coming uh, lives that have different themes. And the next one is now on Monday about housing. Study in Sweden also have live streams and events that you can find on their website. And they are also hosting a live stream together with the migration board. So if you don't think, if you think that this information we gave you today is not enough, and when you're starting this process and you need even more information, you can definitely check out this live stream on 28th of April uh, and make sure you ask them questions. Uh, the Swedish Institute will do the presentation, but the migration board will be in the chat and answering all the questions. The Swedish tax agency also hosts webinars. So if you're not sick and tired of all these webinars already, it's, it's a pandemic, so it's a lot of webinars now. Uh, but they also have new in Sweden uh, webinars that I think is really good about, do I need to pay taxes? It's about the personnummer and all those practical things you need to deal with as soon as you come to Sweden. And remember, if you have program specific questions and you need to know anything about your program that we can't answer today, you can get a phone call from one of our digital ambassadors. So make sure that you sign up in this form that was in the first newsletter that was sent to you uh, on the 9th of April. So sign up there and we'll make sure that one of the digital ambassadors calls you if you have questions about the program we can't answer today. 
So thank you so much for listening. We're going to answer your questions now. I will stop sharing the screen and get started with all the questions. Stop share and let's see what questions we got. So first question is, I'm currently waiting for the SISGP scholarship results. Do I need to tell the university about it? No. 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 <laughs> we Easy. will be informed by the Swedish Institute about all these scholarship holders for the autumn 21. Sounds good. So next question is, I'm reading out most questions out loud. So because some of you maybe don't know that you're wondering the same thing. So you'll get answers to a lot of questions here. And this is actually a common question. How many students are accepted to the biomedicine master's program? And uh, do you want me to answer this, Maria, or should, do you want to? Doesn't matter. Go ahead, you. I'll start. Yeah. So. Um, we accept quite a lot of students to all the programs, even though we have a limited number of students who uh, of spots to the program. This is because we know that not everyone who gets accepted ca can come. And I don't have the numbers in my head at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't give you any numbers at the moment, uh, but quite a lot of students are admitted to the programs, but the, the spots are limited. Next question is, is it possible to sign up for accommodation before firmly accepting our offer? And this is a good question. It depends on, I guess, if you mean uh, SSSB or KI housing. But I'm not sure if you can actually sign up for housing, especially not if you are a fee paying student, because you need to upload your uh, the so-called letter of invitation, uh, the one that you download from universityadmissions.sc. I, I might jump in here. Uh, I remember I did. I, I come from Venezuela, but I'm also a French citizen. So as a European, I, I didn't need this, um, this document you're talking about. And I remember that I signed up for care housing probably the day after I heard the results. Okay. That was my case, yeah. The things that K housing will offer you, and then you have to accept or not. So applying is not the same as getting. So, yeah. Good point. We also have some country specific questions here. So for CONACYT, the Mexican scholarship, I need a letter with some requirements. To whom should I send an email asking for it with the specifications? Send it to me. All scholarship related questions, I'm more than happy to answer and to support with different documents. I know that. There are quite a few scholarship schemes that uh, they are asking for certain documents. And we are more than happy to help you out with that, of course. And Maria's email, you saw it probably in the presentation, but it's maria.olson at ki.se. So one more question about how many students are admitted for the joint master's program in health informatics. And unfortunately, we don't have the numbers uh, right now, I know that uhr.sc will post statistics uh, later on, but I checked in on the website today and I didn't see any of the latest uh, statistics on that website, plus all the statistics here in Sweden is in Swedish, so you need to be a little, you need to have a little knowledge in Swedish to, to understand the statistics. Uh, Jenny, it might be worth mentioning uh, that uh... For the health informatics program, for example, they accept, uh, they want about 40 students in their class. And the same goes for the biomedicine. And for Julio, your program is about 25 or 30 students. Yes, and I was wondering if I could jump in with that, but yeah. uh, by entrepreneurship also has around 40, like by entrepreneurship, biomedicine and health informatics are usually the, the largest ones. And the rest of us, um, well, in my class, we were admitted 30, now we're 28 because two of them dropped but that's, it's around that number, around 30, I would say. Yeah. And feel free to interrupt me, Julio and Maria, if you want to add anything to, to my answers. So next question, what are acceptable reasons for deferral? Uh, would COVID-19 uncertainties count? No, but if you have me to have, sorry, Maria, what did you say? No, I just agree. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, deferral reasons, if you are called for uh, military service, that's an acceptable uh, reason. And also, 
if you uh, have a medical issue, then you can get a deferral if you uh, could prove that with a uh, doctor's statement. And this can also be found on our website, what's, what reasons you can have a deferral for. So continuing Sorry, on. Jenny. I think one thing should be mentioned maybe in relation to COVID-19. If you work as a medical doctor or a nurse or some, something like that in your home country, and those are the reasons for not coming because your country needs you. And if you are able to prove that, that could be an acceptable uh, reason for deferral. Thank you, Maria. Next question is, I'm really looking forward to studying at KI, but I thought I could not get in. So I'm not applying for the KI scholarship yet. And I did not get in the first school chosen in university admission. I am not sure about the question here. Uh, but guessing a little bit, it could be if you could get um, a scholarship later on, I guess. And the answer to that is Maria. No, we don't no. have a second round of scholarships at KI. And uh, sadly, maybe we should say in this context, uh, Sweden is a really bad country when it comes to scholarship. We are a tax-based country. And due to that, we don't offer... Uh, scholarships normally uh, for higher education. Uh, so if you're interested in finding other scholarships, you need to kind of shop around in the, uh, in the wild, wide world. That's the, the sad truth. Yes. Next question is, is COVID-19 vaccination a must for residence permit? No. Nope. Uh, next question about scholarships as well. Unfortunately, I missed the deadlines of the scholarships, SI and the KI scholarship. So my question is, is there any other scholarships other than those? Not that we are uh, in power of. You can still look, find suggestions. Kind of find, look into your own country scholarship schemes. And then uh, there are these big ones as well, uh, connecting to different oil companies I know. And, uh, the World Bank has some scholarships, uh, but you need to do your own homework by Googling and Googling and Googling. It takes a lot of time, but if you find something, it's of course worth it. Next question is, when is the last date for registering? So last date, well, you have to be here on the roll call. Uh, you have to be here. Uh, and if you can't be here uh, and be here on the roll call day, you have to contact your program director directly, or your program at least, to and tell them why you can't come. Next question. Unfortunately, I missed the deadline, so this no, I did this one already. Sorry. Um, what are plans for online or hybrid learning over the next year? That's a good question. Yeah, it's a really good question. The answer is uh, that uh, all the programs are planning for on-campus uh, education and uh, how it should be done and how they plan. Uh, it's up to each study program, so please bear with the uh, program. They will inform you during the summer on the, about their plans. And do I need to be registered for the courses to apply for the personal number? Yes, yes, you do. The, it's, one of, it's one of the documents that you need to uh, show as uh, the tax agency to show that you are actually a student. Yeah. Could you, Julio, please tell us a little bit more how you apply for your personal number? Yes, I. If you remember, I, I do. I do because it was quite simple. Um, it takes time. That's the problem. Sometimes, depending on your case, but if you're an international student, it's way easy. I think that the uh, international students that pay fees got their personal number within weeks. Uh, but for uh, European students, probably took a month or something. So it's it's not that much. You have to wait. But um, you just have to apply in the tax agency um, web page. They give you an appointment, you go there and you submit the documents and the documents are, um, if I recall correctly, some kind of uh, ID, uh, like your passport or something like that, a proof that you are enrolled at KI and you're gonna be here for at least two years. Because um, that's the thing, uh, for those of you who got admitted to the global health uh, program, I understand that you, are, you cannot apply to a person number because that's it, exactly, it's just for students of two years, like two years. Yeah. So yeah, that will be your way of showing that you are gonna be here for two years. And I don't recall any other documents. I think it's case specific, but it was very simple. I, yeah, it was nothing special about it. 
And it's all listed on their website, right? Yeah, so you it's can very, it well. it's in English. It's very easy to understand. It, uh, it has like categories. So you can select where, where you come from, or if you're a student or not. It's, it's, it's very informative. It's very simple. Thank you. And next question is, do I need a residence permit as an EU citizen if I do not stay longer than one year? And no, you don't, uh, but you have to, uh, to tell the Swedish tax agency that you live here in Sweden, of course. So you still have to go and, uh, and let them know that you are going to stay here, even though it's for one year. Are there resources for EU students relocating to Sweden with families? Maria, do you have an answer no. to that? There are no uh, specific uh, KIA resources. There are, or there is, uh, Erasm the Erasmus Plus. Uh, they have a uh, master student loan, I think it's called, which is specifically oriented to master programs uh, located in Europe. And if you're a European citizen, you can apply for those. And a question about Swedish courses. Does KI also offer free Swedish courses during the summer vacation? Maybe some high intensity courses. Do you know the answer or should I go, Maria? No, you go. <laughs> it's difficult when we're not in the same room to decide who's going to answer. <laughs> so normally there is an intensive Swedish course during introduction week, but due to the circumstances, this year there will not be one uh, during introduction week. Uh, so there will only be a Swedish course that is offered for free for all new students during the semester evening course. More information about that will come in one of the newsletters during the summer. Any idea about the classes will be online from August or not? Maria? Hasn't we, hasn't we answered that question? Yeah, it's a similar question. Yeah. So uh, the uh, program will uh, inform you about the setup for your program. And they will do that during the summer. Everything depends on how the uh, situation evolves, of course. Keep updated on our website. We'll always update that when we know more about the situation. So when is the earliest date you can register for the student union? And can I register to SSSB today and try to get an apartment from them? I can take this one. Um, so sorry, because I know there are a lot of turns. But SSSB and the student union are two different things. SSSB is the Stockholm system for accommodation for students. And in order to rent an apartment from them, you have to be registered in your correspondent uh, student union. At KI, it's called MF, Medicinska Foreningen. I don't know if I pronounce it well, but people just call it MF. Um, and uh, you will be able to become a member when you come to Sweden on the first day uh, here in campus, you just pay a fee and, and, and get registered. But you can start accumulating points at SSSB without being a member. So what you can do right now is, uh, as we said before, you go to the SSSB webpage, you create a profile and you start accumulating uh, points, which are days. And after 90 days, that queue will stop you will retain your 90 days, your 90 points. You can, you can keep them. And in the moment that you come to Sweden, you come to Stockholm and you register at an MF, the student union, then um, you will, like, after that, you can queue again, like day 91, 92, 93, you save those days and then you start again. So you could, I mean, you could just do it when you come to Sweden, but those 90 days really make the difference if, if you really, uh, want to move to an SSSB location next year. Well explained, Julio. Well what? Well explained. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question about the starting date. I would like to know what would be the recommended date of arrival, given that the welcoming session is on the 27th of August. Pack. Well, my Pack. recommendation, I arrived, I think it was four days before the first, uh, like the welcoming, and I regret it. I, I wish I would come earlier. Uh, first, because th this is a very personal opinion. This is one of the best places to be in the summer because uh, it's not too warm and it's very sunny and it's incredibly nice. This city is amazing in the summer. Also during winter, but like it's different, you know? Um, so if, if you ask for what is recommended, 
um, well, I recommend you to come at least a week before so you get to know a bit better the city, you go to campus or something like that to get familiarized, but it's not required, honestly. It's, it's up to you. If I can add something to that, I've also heard a lot from our students over the year that they really liked coming here a little bit earlier. And also all programs, they are given a Facebook group in the program welcome letter. So you can start connecting with your program classmates already now. And I know that a lot of people meet each other there and, tell, and ask, hey, is someone in Sweden and want to meet up and do something in August? So it's a great way to get to know each other before classes start. And it's a nice way of seeing Stockholm as well. But you have to be in Sweden uh, on the start of your program. That's a, an absolute requirement. Let's see, we have a little longer question here. I applied for two tracks of public health sciences at Karolinska, making them my first and second choice for masters. I have been waitlisted by the first one and given an offer for the second. Can I accept my second choice of offer now or will I have to wait to hear back from my first choice? Maria, do you want to take this or should we? Should we just leave it? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, definitely accept your place. And then if you get another, uh, I mean, if you get the option of entering the first, uh, the first. Uh, uh, you disappeared there a little bit. We, I couldn't hear you, but maybe it was just me. Same here, same here. But okay, I'm no. So please accept the place. And uh, if there's uh, going to be a, uh, a free spot on the track that you're listed as a prior one, um, then you get in contact with the admissions office if, if that happens. All right, next question. Hello, I Jenny, would like to... Jenny, could I interrupt with a question? Yes, sure. We'll be there's, there's a lot of uh, participants uh, asking about um, Facebook groups for the different uh, programs, study programs. Mm -hmm. And isn't it so that there should be a, a Facebook group for each, each program? Yes, there is. So if you have received your program welcome letter, and all programs should have received one by now, uh, you can find a Facebook group, uh, Facebook group in your program welcome letter. Uh, so please go to your program welcome letter and you will find it there. If there's any problem, who should they contact Jenny? If you have a problem, you can uh, email me, for example, Jenny enblom at ki.se. I can write down my email in the chat. Ulrika already did that. Thank you, Ulrika. Uh, contact me or contact uh, one of the digital ambassadors of your program if you know who that is. But you can contact me and I will help you. I hope you will find the Facebook groups. It's a great way to connect. Uh, next question. Hello, I would like to know who I can contact to ask some questions I still have about my degree. How many students are on the master's uh, in biomedicine this year? I would say the digital ambassador. For a call. It's a good. Yes. You can sign up for a call and uh, our digital ambassador from your program will give you a call. Yes. And you find the sign up link for a phone call in the first newsletter. So I understand that there is no introduction weekend, only introduction ceremony on the 27th. How in advance do you recommend to move to Stockholm? I guess we already answered this question a little bit, but it continues a little bit. For registrations in the commune, opening a bank account, settle, etc. What date approximately? Julio, do you have any recommendations depending on how long time all of these things took for you, like opening a bank account, registering in Sweden and stuff like that? I, I mean, I did it on the go, honestly, well, on the first semester, because I mentioned the first month or the first two months are usually um, a slow pace compared to what comes next. So it's a great time to settle in and do all of this. So don't worry, you'll have time. Sounds good. And next question, if I am an EU member who grew up outside, could I apply for the FOSS Plus? Maria? No, uh, you will only get the FOSS Plus insurance if you paid the tuition fee. They go hand in hand. Next, next question, uh, does 
Does it mean that you need a total of 102,816 Swedish crowns in your bank account at the time of applying for a residence permit for one year masters? Yes. <laughs> Good math. <laughs> so much money, but yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I think we should mention that this is done out of kind of carefulness from the Swedish Migration Agency side. They want you to be able to support yourself if something happens. Since we have this tax-based uh, society, there is no really further help to, to get if something happens when you're here. University doesn't have any specific money to uh, help you with if you, uh, I mean, if there's any big things. So this is just to be uh, sure that you will be having a good time here. Next question. I read in the pre-departure guidance ebook that the newly admitted student has to bring the academic certificate and transcript to Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. Is it compulsory? I guess everything is becoming digital now. Thank you. Maria, do you know the answer to this one? Uh, it sounds very old fashioned to bring them, but I, I don't really know. Uh, I agree. And uh, to be honest, I don't know the answer to this. So maybe you need to contact the admissions office and ask if it's really compulsory to do that. Next question. This, to support yourself, it is said the funds need to be owned. What about if one moves with family, spouse, and have a joint account? Well, that works fine. If you're, uh, if you're married, you can have the same account. Please make sure, though, that if you bring your family, you need to be uh, able to prove that you have a little bit, bit more than 8,500 each month. Everything is stated on the uh, website of the Immigration Agency. Yes. Does the school offer some student loan opportunities? No, sorry. No. But if you're a European citizen, uh, please check out the Erasmus Plus uh, website. There are really good student loans for master uh, studies. Good. Uh, next question. I use the contact information of our program director as contact person for applying for the accommodation. Would this be problematic? When yes, should I submit my application again with the right contact person? And uh, I have heard that students have done this a couple of times before, and I don't think it's problematic. I haven't heard anything about it. So you don't have to do it again. But if you are, haven't done anything yet, uh, then you know now that you can write our study guidance name. Uh, but if you have already done it with your uh, program director, I think everything is fine anyway. I am a US citizen in the Global Health Program. Am I covered by the health insurance of the FOSS Plus program? There are several questions here, but I will uh, start with this one. Yes, if you've paid the fee or if you will pay the tuition fee, you will be covered by FOSS Plus. Second question, I read on the migration website that I can apply online for my residence permit through e-service, but on the Karolinska Welcome pamphlet, it says I have to apply in person. Am I allowed to apply online? Yes, do, do apply uh, online, please. Makes uh, it easier for all partners. Yes. And one more question about how many students are admitted in the Global Health Program. And we don't have any numbers here at the moment, how many are admitted to any other programs, unfortunately. Um, a student here uh, is an EU student in Global Health. I have applied to Jägergatan residences. When I will be about to know the results of my application and who I should name as a contact person. So once again, you should write uh, Eva Ferron, our study guidance. And on the time, I will say around summer. Sorry, what did you say, Julio? That around, can she also ask about uh, when will she know the results and around summer, I would say. Sounds good. 
Uh, the residence permit is not necessary for students from the EU, but only the Swedish personal identity number, correct? Well, it's not that it's necessary. I, you could come here, like, that's one of the magic, uh, like, that's the magic of the EU, right? Like, you can move around, but you will definitely need the, the person number for some stuff, like getting a, a bank account, a cell phone number, or whatever. So, yeah, apply for it, yeah. I strongly recommend that you apply for it, yes. You need it for almost everything here. But, but I mean, you can come and live a, a month in Sweden without it un until you get it, so yeah. don't stress, yeah. Absolutely. Um, if there is any change about whether the study would be presential or online, when would we be notified? Well, when we know ourselves, I think they will, you will be notified as soon as we know anything here at KI. Uh, your programs will also be in contact with you. So if they have any changes for the coming fall semester, you will hear that from them as well. First of all, I would say. Can I please check that UK students definitely count as international students in terms of receiving guaranteed accommodation and two paying tuition fees this year? Yes, that's the outcome of the Brexit. Definitely. Yes. Is guaranteed accommodation always through KI housing? Yes. How do we need to show proof for funds for the whole two years or one year when applying for residence permits? Just for one year. You only get a residence permit for the first year. And then after the first year, you need to uh, apply for an extension of uh, the old permit. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, Thank you for hosting this night's webinar. Thank you. Uh, can I move to a KI student housing with my family? I have a six years old son. And yes, you can. There are some rooms in some of the housing um, accommodations where you can actually stay with family. I don't know if you, Julio, know exactly which ones they are, but you can definitely find information about that on KI Housing's website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll refer to that as well. Go there, but they, they definitely are. Yeah. Yes. My question is, is it possible for a student to come up with her daughter since she is the only person looking after her? Yes, it is possible. And if, may I uh, say something there? If the daughter is uh, big enough to uh, attend uh, kindergarten, uh, that just, I mean, you have the right to have her in, in Swedish kindergarten as well. So make sure you arrange all these uh, extra facilities before coming here. There is a uh, international staff services call, I think, uh, at the KI's website, where you find very useful information about moving to uh, Sweden with the kids. Are you there, Jenny? She froze, right? She froze, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, she left. Uh, something happened. Well, yeah, we can continue, I guess. Yep. Uh, so we do it wild and crazy, Julia. We go from the very bottom instead. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, so next question, uh, are pets allowed that KI accommodation? Ooh. No, no, not that I know of, no. Good, and then uh, Laura asked uh, about uh, the housing and she would think you named the wrong person as the contact person. It doesn't really matter. We have good communication within KI, so we'll solve that. If we don't hear from KI accommodation option results until summer, do you recommend us to keep acti actively looking for accommodation alternatives during this time? What do you say, Julio? Well, in my case, uh, I'm also an anxious person, so I thought as, about that as well, but I waited until, I think it was the first days of July, if I'm not mistaken, where I got my offer, which is like two months in advance. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, you can still look if, if you want. That also depends on what are your needs and uh, yeah, if you're moving along or not. But I mean, depends on your situation. If you're a new uh, student or if you are an international student, you know that you're gonna get something. But as I said before, and obviously you, I, this is not like an official thing, but I haven't heard of anyone who applied uh, to K House and didn't get it at some point. So, and also this year, uh, I know that K I won't host that many exchange students, and they normally have uh, guaranteed housing as well. So this means there's going to be a little bit more accommodation available than uh, than a normal year. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, another recommendation question. I have already applied KI residence Solna for studio apartment as my husband will be staying with me and only two studio apartments allows two persons to stay. Uh, but in the website, it has mentioned that only PhD student can have it. Uh, go ahead and apply. Definitely. And then uh, uh, they'll uh, normally solve everything. And then we have a question about one year master. Oh yeah, maybe this one you can help out with Julio. If you're on a one year masters, did you say you didn't get a personal number? How do you get bank account, phone number, etc., without one? That's a good question. I know that there's uh, like a um, replacement for the person number that is called something in Swedish, but it's, it's translated to the coordination number. It's kind of like a replacement. It's not like an official one, but it still works for uh, the purposes that you're describing, honestly. But well, there's some online banking over there. I don't know if I, I should not mention any names. I, I'm not very sure, Maria. No, right? Okay. Yeah, but, they're yeah. like, okay, okay. but there are like some banks uh, over there that work um, digitally. And uh, I know well, we didn't have that two years ago, but I know that students this year like a lot of them are not even considering open a bank account because they have everything there. So that's also an option if, if you um, are not allowed to have a person number. Yeah, and uh, getting a uh, cell phone number is possible well, with this some only yeah. number. Correct. Uh, okay, another question. Is it possible to accept the offer of KI now and withdraw later if circumstances change? Yes, uh, you can accept your offer, but please make sure if you know that uh, something will change, make sure that you withdraw your offer on time so we can offer the spot to another one. As you heard, there are very few study seats. Uh, and uh, if you, uh, an offer will go to an international student, they need to apply for the residence permit before the 15th of June. So make sure you uh, withdraw on time then. Uh, what else? Another accommodation. Uh, I think we covered that one. So next question. Do Europeans need to apply to Sweden, Swedish health insurance or can we do it in our home country? Uh, if you're a European citizen, you do it in your home country. But make sure you bring that European card. It's very, very important. Uh, what else? This is, uh, do I need that big money in my bank account for applying for the resident permit if I get the SI scholarship? Uh, the SI scholarship covers both tuition fee and living expenses. So for uh, those uh, who scholarship from SI, you will just upload or uh, yeah, upload the uh, scholarship letter to the migration agency. That works perfectly fine. So you don't need to prove that you have those big monies in your own bank account. Um, well, uh, next question about permits as well. I recently moved to Sweden and I have a resident permit valid for two years, currently waiting for my personal number. Is there anything in particular I should do regarding tuition fees before any deadlines? Um, no. If you have a valid resident permit, uh, you don't need to, uh, okay, let's say like this. If you have a valid resident permit based uh, on other things than studies, you are waived from the fees. 
then you don't need to do anything. So if you have a working permit, uh, you can upload that to us. Maybe, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the question. I'm sorry if I'm uh, making you confused. Um, uh, relevant question, do we need to do a 14 day self quarantine after arriving in Sweden? I really don't know at this point, but regardless of, uh, you should check the public health um, agency of Sweden information before travel because it doesn't really matter what we say right now because when you come at that point, things might be different. So just stay up to date. Uh, do you need to show a financial statement to get housing at KI? You've done it, Julio, do you? Say again, sorry? Do you need to show a financial statement to get housing at KI? No, not at all, not at all, no. <laughs> uh, and this one uh, is very relevant as well. When will we receive the activation code for the student login at KI? Uh, I don't know that. Uh, Ulrika, are you there? Maybe you can answer? Will you repeat the question again? I was trying to uh, see if I could let Jenny into the, the oh, okay. webinar again. <laughs> so the question is, when will you receive the activation code for the student login at KI? Good question. I could, uh, I'm not sure of the exact date, but I could send you a link to information on the website uh, where you could probably find that information. Just let me check up and check that and I'll send it to you on the chat. Excellent. Um, Normally it's in the summer. Can you hear me, can you hear me now? My yes, damage is not can. showing and I don't know why, but maybe you can hear me. <laughs> Welcome back, Jenny. Thank you. This is the downside of working from home. I do not have a steady internet connection. And I can add to the activation code that will be sent for your KI account. I think it will be sent in the beginning of June sometime. So keep an eye open in your email because that's good. And I just want to add that we're actually one hour has passed. It's uh, seven minutes past four. So it's actually the webinar time is over, but we can take maybe two more questions and the rest of the questions we'll do our best to answer uh, off camera. Let's do that. So uh, if uh, I think I didn't receive my welcome letter to the master program of biomedicine, who should I contact? Jenny, who should uh, they you can contact me there as well, or uh, if you know who your program director is, but you can contact me, jenny.enblom at ki.sc. I will write it down to everyone. The last question for you, Julio, uh, from uh, a student to be. What is the procedure for registering with the student union? Oh, it's quite simple. You just go to the student union building, uh, uh, Campus Solna, and um, you just walk in and say, hey, I want to register. And they, they, they do everything for you, honestly, because you're in the system, of course. Uh, so you just have to pay. I, if I recall correctly, it was 199 crowns, uh, which is about 20 euros, 20 US dollars, like around that. Uh, range for the semester so you pay that you become a member that it's, it's very easy and after that I think you can renew your um, membership on online but I think that the first time you have to go there uh, if I if I recall correctly and Maria I had a question here like it, I would like to answer um, as well it's about K housing and um, someone asked uh, if they should apply to locations that are far away from Solna campus, even though their programs are gonna be held in Solna campus. And the answer uh, for everyone wondering is yes. Um, you should apply, well, obviously you can list your options and you can give priority to the ones that you feel more comfortable with. Uh, but uh, international students that pay, well, fee paying students, let's call them that way, uh, high priority uh, for those uh, locations as well. But I lived in Flemingsburg, the, the other campus for a year and I uh, went to Solna every day. 
yeah, I mean, it's commuting. At that moment, I hated the commuting. Now I kind of like miss it a bit, <laughs> but it's not too terrible. And, and living uh, on the other campus also has a lot of perks uh, because of the facilities that you have there. So you apply, yeah, apply, apply to everything. And it's worth mentioning that uh, the uh, nutrition program is based in Flemings Bay. Um, Okay, Jenny, are you still there or should we? Um... I am still here, oh. but I think we can round up. So Perfect. thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I'm so sorry for some of the technical issues, but we recorded everything. So you can, if you want to, you can go back and listen to whatever you missed before. And we'll stay and answer questions uh, via the Q&A, uh, writing them down. So thank you so much for coming and congratulations once again. And welcome to Stockholm and KI. Looking forward to see you here. Welcome, everybody, and thanks.